Agora TV. The world is thinking. Much of what you're hearing here is that there are always two sides to every revolution. We may be experiencing Moore's law, but we haven't gotten rid of Murphy's law. We're getting incredible science fiction-like capabilities, but we also have incredible science fiction-like dilemmas to figure out. And these dilemmas sometimes evolve from very small things, from what um, a vice president of a robotics company called oops moments. When things don't work out with your robot, it's just an oops moment, he said. What are example of oops moments in war so far? Well, sometimes they're kind of funny. Like for example, when they uh, tested out a machine gun armed ground robot, you actually saw a picture of it. It looked a little bit like a lawnmower with a 50 caliber machine gun on top of it. When they did a demonstration of it for a group of VIPs, it went, quote, squirrely. It started spinning in a circle and pointed its weapon system at the review stand of VIPs. <laughs> They were very happy that there were no bullets in the machine gun at the time. Other time oops moments can be tragic. Just about two years ago in South Africa, an um, automated anti-aircraft cannon had a quote, software glitch. We've all experienced the software glitches before. Well, in this case, the cannon, which was supposed to fire upwards into the sky during a training exercise, instead leveled. And it started firing in a circle. It killed nine soldiers before it ran out of ammunition. It was the scene from the movie RoboCop playing out in reality. And the point is not just that this happened, but how do we respond? Imagine if you were the young investigator who was asked to resolve this issue. What system of laws would you turn to for guidance? Because what we have playing out here is 21st century technology like a Reaper drone that can take off and land on its own, that is smart enough that if it sees footprints in a field to backtrack those footprints. We have this 21st century technology being applied against 21st century actors in war, like an insurgent who hides out in a house surrounded by women and children, not because they're ignorant of the laws of war, but because they are deliberately violating them. So you have these two 21st century poles and the laws of war from the 20th century caught in the middle. So for example, the most important technology to come out the year that the Geneva Conventions were written was actually the 45 RPM record player. It's a lot to ask of a law that that's, that's so old to keep up with this technology. And actually, when I was at um, Human Rights Watch doing interviews there, there was a great moment for a writer where two of the leaders, I asked them, well, what, what system of law do we turn to if a predator drone strike goes awry? And they got in an argument in front of me rather than answering me directly. One of them was saying, it's the Geneva Conventions, like we've always looked to. And the other one argued back at them, no, 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 Geneva Conventions really don't apply in this circumstance. We should turn to the Star Trek Prime Directive for guidance. <laughs> And he was serious. Now, I'm a Trekkie, I love it, but the problem is we can't actually call Captain Kirk as a real expert in a real court of law. And so, in ending, it sounds like I've been talking about the future, but notice how every single example I gave you, every single picture you saw is not from the future. The dangerous idea is that it's actually from our present. And this sets an incredible challenge before us. Are we going to let the fact that this looks like science fiction, feels like science fiction, keep us from facing the reality of not only technology, but the reality of war today?